This is Jack Molman, and uh, we're at the Marriott in Atlanta, Georgia. And in one minute, it will be the 6th of July. Indeed. 2013. We're here as part of the 2013 uh, ATOS uh, uh, National Convention. And with us is, to me, a, one of the, if not the best, I'll say one of the best, theater organist that I've ever heard and the people at the convention have ever heard. His name's Richard Hills. <laughs> Richard Hills and he hails from the United Kingdom. And oh you can tell us how old you are. Uh, as of the time of this interview I'm 32 years old. 32. And welcome Richard. <laughs> Thanks Jack. The reason I bring that up is uh, Richard first made his appearance in ATOS at the Young Theater Organist Competition in Detroit, Michigan in 1995. Mm, it's a great convention. The next year, because he was the overall winner, let's see, you entered as the junior year? That's junior. right, yes. There's a couple of your compatriots that dragged it out and won the junior, then the intermediate and the senior, and then took us all on. But anyway, he won the <laughs> overall, well-deserved, and that brought him to the convention the next year in Pasadena in 1996. And overall, he's performed at 13 ATOS conventions, be they national ones or, or annual ones or, or regional ones. So uh, welcome, Richard. Thanks, Jack. Can't believe it's 13. <laughs> well, Time flies it is. when you're having fun, doesn't it? Yeah, the, my first question is always, how did you first get started in music? Not the, particularly the organ, but your interest and in okay. get things going. Um, well, let's turn the clock back. My earliest memory of music, arguably, is sitting in my grandparents' car, waiting to board a ferry to the Isle of Man, uh, which is off the west coast of the UK. And uh, I must have been, I suppose, two years old, 18 months at the time. And I remember we had a cassette which was called Pop, Piano and Hammond. And on one side it was um, Russ Conway playing the piano, and on the other side it was Franz Lambert playing the Hammond organ. And I loved that cassette so much that I wore it out playing it. And I remember waiting to board the ferry, listening to that, and it was dark and atmospheric. Mm -hmm. um, that's certainly one of my earliest memories. Um, and I remember liking the sound of the Hammond organ and, and of that style of music played on keyboard instruments. So then somewhere you got into, did you start on the piano? Well, uh, my uh, family household had an upright piano when I was a toddler. And uh, I remember standing up just as soon as I could walk and, and reaching up and, and plinking on the keys and no doubt making a horrible noise. but. Um, Funnily enough, in my head, I remember to this day, I, the, the tune in my head that I was trying to play, it was Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. Um, so I obviously had, had music in my head back then. And shortly after that, the piano was sold, and by all accounts I was um, uh, beside myself with grief at the fact that the piano had departed the family household. So by way of compensation, my folks bought me uh, a small Bon Tempe reed organ and uh, I loved that and I played it and I used to pick out tunes on it. One you had to pump? No, it uh, was one that you plugged into the wall as I recall. I think that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah you plugged it in and turned it on. And it had buttons for chords, I remember, for the left hand and a very short compass keyboard. And uh, I remember at that time picking out um, Rain congratulations. Rain falling on my head. <laughs> no, that was a bit earlier. Um, I remember Cliff Richard's Congratulations was a, a big favourite of mine in those days. I suppose I'd have been about three by that stage. Um, so music was, was obviously going to be some part of my life. Um, and I outgrew that and my folks bought me um, a Yamaha home organ, which I played until um, I suppose I was about 11 or 12 and then I got a bigger Yamaha home organ and then by the time I was 14 my teacher John Norris um, was looking to sell his Allen organ 
and uh, at that point I was lucky enough to buy that. Well, so, who was your teacher all these years, this uh, one that you just mentioned? Um, I was very lucky uh, in uh, being able to go to study with John Norris, who was arguably the finest teacher of um, light entertainment organ that we had in the UK. And uh, many of the gr great sort of UK players went through him. Uh, he's the, he was the UK's equivalent to John Ferguson over mm -hmm. here, I guess. In, in classical organ or theatre organ? Well, he did teach me some um, early grades of classical organ, yes. Um, but primarily theatre organ. I, I continued my studies with him right up until I was 18 and left to go off to university. But uh, I owe him an awful lot, not just for the theatre organ, but also because he uh, had a very great respect for classical music in general and classical organ. And it was he who said that I really had to continue my classical organ studies as well, because there was probably a time when I would have been so enamoured with the theatre organ that I would have gone completely into that to the expense of everything else. And he was very good at keeping my feet on the ground and saying, you must continue your classical studies. And uh, I've been very grateful for that advice ever since. Now, you had something to do with Westminster Abbey, a scholar or something. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that was? Uh, yes, I um, came down from university and spent a year uh, on the staff of Portsmouth Cathedral, which is down on the south coast of the UK, as organ scholar, and then was lucky enough to go up to London to do a similar position, but at Westminster Abbey. And uh, I was there for um, a year working with that wonderful choir and those wonderful surroundings. You probably read in my bio somewhere that I got to play there in 1960 when the family took a trip over and I, they were having tours and, and I got to play the organ. Oh, wonderful. So it's on the bio, not that it was any big that, deal. But, uh, that will have been in its original, more or less original state from 1937 yeah. then. Mm. Now, you've done a lot of concertizing mm -hmm. and dazzled a lot of people. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think is the most spectacular would love to do it again, uh, concert that you've done, both uh, in terms of the venue, the audience, the organ, how your your performance, everything. What What's what's the biggest, fanciest oh, well, thing you've done? That's Maybe you've done them all the Many different questions same. there. No, well, no, certainly not that. And um, it's very rare, if ever, that I come away from the end of a concert uh, without thinking critically about something I could have done better. Uh, it just doesn't really work like that, but... Uh, You're probably the only one that thinks that, though. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I hope so. <laughs> it's always nice to strive for perfection, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm often pleased, but I'm rarely 100% satisfied, but uh, you know, there's always you, so much... Can you think of any big one that you had? Well, I, you know, I've been, I've been so lucky over the years, and I've always um, been very... Had a, had a great feeling of a sense of, of privilege for some of the opportunities I've been given, dating right back, as you were saying, to the early ATUS conventions. Well, uh, let's, try the, let's try the other way then. How about one that was a, just a complete disaster, in your <laughs> opinion, where the organ didn't work, the audience was late, uh, you'd never want to do it again. Um, and I've, of these interviews, I've always found that everybody found one that they would fit into this category. And you can name the place and the time if you want. Well, I certainly wouldn't be as ungentlemanly as to do that. Um, I've never, I, I'm honest about this, I'm, I'm telling the truth, I, I've never um, felt that a concert was a waste of time. You know, there have been some that have been on, let's say, instruments which are not as, uh, not in the, the Premier League. Um, but there's always something to be gained from that. And there's a valuable experience to be gained, and there's um, sometimes quite a good, good laugh. Actually, I've mm. been I've been known to be very uh, amused by some instruments, and uh, and the whole experience can be quite, quite amusing. So it's not been a completely um, felt like a completely pointless task. I mean, I always try to take something away as well as put something into a performance. Um, but as you rightly say, some have been more memorable than others. Um, I shall always remember uh, my first full uh, convention concert at the Oakland Paramount back in 1998. Um, what, what a wonderful opportunity to play that instrument uh, you know, as a 17-year-old. Um, I've always been grateful for that. 
and uh, so many wonderful instruments I've played. I, I, I always enjoy my experiences uh, at Dickinson High School and at Century 2 in Wichita to name but two large instruments, but I get just as much in um, enjoyment out of playing a, a small two manual Wurlitzer mm. as well. It, you know, it really much depends on, on quality rather than quantity. Well, let's try this one. What, uh, what is, uh, where is an organ that you haven't played, we'll just limit this to the United States mm -hmm. for the time being, that you're, it's really an ambition to sometime be invited to play it publicly or privately or uh, whatever the, that uh, when you have played it you've arrived so to speak. <laughs> well I had a feeling you might ask me that so I, I've given that some thought um, and I suppose the obvious one that springs to mind is Radio City Music Hall for all of its um, wonderful heritage and history and uh, also because I grew up listening to the wonderful Ashley Miller recordings. Uh, I wish you well when you do that one. Thank you. Um, but of course uh, there are some other, I, I'm a big fan of playing in theatre organs, organs that are still in their original theatres, um, because that's something that we don't really get an opportunity to do very much in the UK. And so I can think of a, a couple of uh, in theatre instruments I would like to see. Um, one being down in Denver, the Denver Paramount mm -hmm. organ, and uh, I would like to see the St. Louis Fox. I mean, I was lucky to see the Detroit Fox back in. Well, I can get you in St. Louis Fox. Oh, great! <laughs> I'm, a, I'm staff organist there. Are so, you? Yeah. Oh, fabulous! Well, let's talk. So I, can, I, can get, I can get you in there. <laughs> but uh, that would be very interesting to play, as I say, having having played its sister in Detroit. So. Okay, well, we're going to try and do that. Uh, you know, you, you've got several recordings to your name. Mm -hmm. I, people watch you on YouTube and my recommendation would be that you need a DVD that features nothing but your encores. <laughs> well, I think... Um, I mean, they are spectacular. The whole concert is, but I mean, when you get up there to do the other day Sweet Georgia Brian, you're flying all over the place. And I don't know whether you have that prearranged. I think you're just making it up as you go along. Um, it, I'm it, usually pretty spontaneous, I suppose. And it has to be seen. <laughs> well, you're very kind to say that, but uh, when Tiger I think, rag. I think a DVD of, of, of uh, a whole DVD of that sort of thing might um, leave the listener somewhat wanting for the musicality of the <laughs> of the product. But well, uh, you know what I mean. But I know what you mean. Uh, it's kind of you to say. I mean, you you have some of That's these on YouTube. Do. Tiger Rag, and mm -hmm. there was something that the other day. It was it was just really terrific. Uh, what would be your advice to young people that want to get into music or mm -hmm. don't know that they want to? We don't know who watches these things when they're, when they're on YouTube, Indeed. and either get into the organ or. What, mm. what do you think? Well, um, there are a number of things I can say to that question. I and mean, I think if you want, you have to be fairly sure of yourself to, to want to, to be a professional musician. Um, because unless you're very, very lucky, at some point it, it's going to be very hard work. Um, now, a few years ago, I might have said, if you can do something else, um, then you should explore that first. I'm not sure I would say that now because I think that if you're passionate about music, then absolutely you, you must pursue that passion. Now, do you do something um, else besides music? Or no. Music is it? No, music is it. Uh, <clears throat> but it's taken me a few years to build up a you know, portfolio, portfolio of work to, um, to the point where I feel comfortable to, mm. you know, uh, from a purely um, business point of view. Uh, but what I would say is, well, two things, two, two big things. Firstly, I think you really um, should get the widest possible musical training you can. Um, even though when you start out it can be terribly dull to practice those scales and those arpeggios and do all those technical exercises, um, really take every opportunity that's given to you to learn how to do it properly because I think your technique is the infrastructure that equips you to get your ideas down from your head onto the keys or onto the, the strings or whatever it may be. And uh, I've spoke to many people 
who are frustrated because they've got lots of musical ideas but they don't have the technique to bring them off. And I think that's something which you need to start as soon as possible to get, get the fingers or the whatever it may be, the voice working in the right way. Um, Piano before the organ? Well, I would definitely recommend that you a, a keyboard musician studies the piano, definitely, yes. And I was lucky to do that, just that. Um, I was a bit funny in the sense that my piano studies and my organ playing kind of developed side by side. So I was already playing the organ, but I started studying the piano first, and then shortly after came organ lessons, and the two were always running concurrently. But I do think there's a lot of valuable technique and um, um, music, musicality and musicianship to be gained from learning the piano. I would definitely urge any keyboard, uh, potential keyboard musician to do that. Um, and I think just opening yourself up to the widest possible variety of music and musical experience is going to set you in very good stead. So don't just go and listen to the organ, go and listen to orchestras, to singers, to choirs, listen to music that goes back as far as you can, to plain chant, to Renaissance polyphony, listen right up to, to modern composers, modern bands, take what you can from them and uh, you know, music is, you get out of music what you put into it and I think that I've um, been very fortunate to enjoy many different avenues of music making because I was encouraged as a, a, a youngster to listen widely and to have an open mind. Um, and from a purely business point of view, of course, if you have the widest possible training, um, so you can play the piano and you can direct a choir and you can play a church organ and you can play a theatre organ, then um, the possible avenues open to you for making a living, of course, are that much wider. So if you suddenly find that you know, you have, you've got a month with no concert performances, you can go and deputise at a church on a Sunday morning or play for a wedding or do something to keep the money rolling in as a musician. Well, you've certainly made a mark, and uh, I think we'll sort of bring this to a close, but you've got a lot of fans in the American Theatre Organ Society. Oh, thank you, Jack. And I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, you, you've achieved everything that you've said you would be good on the, what you just said about uh, and your performances and your attitude and you're a nice person oh well that's kind of me to say yeah <laughs> so uh, I uh, I thank you for being Richard Hills thank you Jack for and being we, Jack <laughs> and, we, and we look forward to whatever is coming next even a, another encore <laughs> whatever it may be so anyway this is uh, Jack Molman on July f now it's the 6th now it's the 6th 2013 in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, wish you the very best in your future endeavors, Richard. Thank you very much, Jack. <laughs>